if they sing, this is the day. I don't care if they sing the same songs that we did this morning with a fancy band. I don't care if they sing rock and roll that make your ears hurt. I don't care if they raise their hands and jump and shout. Because that are not the gifts of the Spirit. That's just a worship style that we like. You don't have to be like that to be Pentecostal. You don't have to be like that to be apostolic. I'm not sure that Paul's saying this is the day. <sighs> he might have. It's been around a long time. But he spoke in tongues and the Spirit gave him utterance. He laid hands on the sick and they did recover. He laid hands on the blind and they did see. The power of God was in that church. Is it in the church today? Pentecost, the beginning of the church. Pentecost, the most important holiday in Christian history. And only a few of you in here remembered it was Pentecost. Because it hadn't been stressed enough. We put in false holidays. Say amen. Amen. And ignored the real. At the Pentecost that Moses had, the age of direct revelation that Abraham had, that he was talking about, ended. Moses went up to them. I'm not going to go in the Old Testament here. I'm just going to tell you. Moses went up to the mountain. And he talked to God. And he got the Ten Commandments. And then God talked to the people and gave them a total of 613 commands. And we come under the dispensation of law. It happened exactly on 50, on the 50th day after Passover, Pentecost. 50. The law. They came under the law, a law they could not keep. No matter how hard you try to keep the law, here's one that did try. You can't do it. It's an impossibility. So God, by his grace, sent his son to the cross. And on the day of Pentecost, the true church of Jesus Christ was born. Things changed. Take your Bible. Turn to the book of Acts. First chapter. I'm going to start right in the beginning. The former thesis I have made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began to do and to teach, until the day which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Ghost, have given commandments unto the apostles who he had chosen, to whom he had showed himself alive after his passion for many infallible proofs, being seen by them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. How would you like to went to that Bible college? Forty days with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the ruler of the universe, the creator of all himself, and he instructed the apostles on how the church of Jesus Christ was supposed to be. This is day one, 40 days. 40 days of being taught by the master in his glorified state. Yeah, but well, they must not have understood him because we want to make it another way. That's what you'll see in the church. What's supposed to be the church. They, we, they must not have understood him. I mean, Jesus just talked to him 40 days. They must have got it mixed up. Forty days sitting with the master, and then ten days of serious prayer. 
We need to go on 10 days of serious prayer. We need to pray an hour or so for 10 days, see what the Holy Ghost don't show up. Hallelujah. How many followed through and handed out their little flyers this week? One. Two. All of them? Well, it's the beginning. Keep after it. Keep doing it. Follow through. To whom he all showed himself alive and after his passion for many improbable proofs being seen by them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, Ye have heard from me. For truly John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. They don't understand. There's a lack of understanding here. A lot of you love Jesus, but you got a lack of understanding. A lot of you watching this on TV, you got you love Jesus, but you got a lack of understanding. You just don't get it. You've been trained wrong. You've been taught wrong. You got traditions in your life, and you can't seem to get rid of them. And Grandma did it that way, so that's the way I'm going to do it. You can't take the word of God because of the traditions of man. Amen. He said to wait. Now I would think. That if I had been trained by Jesus for 40 days, I might be ready to go out and spread the gospel of the kingdom of God, right? He said, wait. Wait. You're not ready. But I just sat down with Jesus for 40 days in his glorified state, and he told me how it's supposed to be. You're not ready. Apollos went off like that. Not ready. Paul had to go on and clean up his mess and get people baptized right and filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts 19. Anybody remember that? Acts 19. Then they were came to they to ask him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of God? They want him to throw out the Romans. They want him to throw out the Romans. They weren't looking at the Spirit of God. They weren't looking at the, at the spreading of the church around the world that was about to happen. They just wanted to get the Romans out of town. They did not understand. Why didn't they understand? Because they didn't have it yet. Their the eyes had not been opened by the Holy Ghost. He said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in your own power, but ye shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. You shall receive power. That means you must not have any till you get it. That's why you can be so easily convinced by the traditions of men because you don't have that Holy Ghost apostolic power running your life. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. He told him it. If you read Luke's writing, he'd been, he told them in Luke, he, the, he, told the, he told the disciples about this, and yet they didn't understand it. They didn't have it. They prayed for... Ten days after the Bible college closed. And then, let's go to Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. Why did it say fully come? Why did it say fully come? Awry. Because this was the real Pentecost that would change. This was the Pentecost that would change the world. This was the 50. This was the 50 days after Passover. They've been doing Pentecost ever since the time of Moses, but this is the one that was going to make a difference. This was what was going to change the world because power was going to come into the people that they might do 
do the work. I've got a book in the house called In Search of the Twelve Apostles and where they went. And according to history and legend, what they did. They literally spread this gospel around the known world. Empowered by God after the Holy Spirit came upon them. They went to England establish the church. <laughs> Which remained apostolic until the Romans found them. Which spread to Ireland. What they call St. Peter, neither was he Irish or was he Catholic. He was an English apostolic that spread the gospel. Tongue-talking, Jesus-name person. Thomas took the gospel empowered by this Holy Ghost power and clear into Asia and into China where remnants of that church still exist today where they're still speaking in tongues and the only objects in their churches are crosses. Disappeared from the rest of what was supposed to be called the church for a thousand years stayed with the true doctrine of Jesus Christ, set forth here in the book of Acts. By the grace of God, we still have the book. It's called the Church of the East. A Presbyterian minister wrote the history of it back in the 1800s. He called it the Church on Fire because they were filled with that Holy Ghost power. I'm afraid that today in our churches that are supposed to be Holy Ghost filled, that we don't have the power that we once had, that we don't have the respect for God and we don't understand his sovereignty and it's not happening like it did then because in this church where it's preached as strong as it is, not everybody gave out their five little flyers last week. Truly on fire, people would cover, giving you all trouble, would cover a few thousand miles in a week. They did it on a horse. Cleared Asia and China. Within the first hundred years, it was spread that far. Hallelujah. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. Why? Because this was the full Pentecost. This is the one that wasn't by law any longer. It was going to change it and get it out from under the law and get it under the power of God. They were all in one accord in one place. They were in agreement. Why could they be in agreement? Because Jesus just trained them. And suddenly came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind that filled the house where they were sitting and they prepared to them clothes and tongues like as a fire that sounded each and then they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The true church of Jesus Christ was born that day. It was born that day. Just short, about 18, 20 years short, 2,000 years ago. It was born that day. And it transformed the world as the people were filled with the Holy Ghost and with power. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Some people thought they were nuts. Some people think we're nuts. <laughs> Ross went into, oh Lord, one of those churches that are part, not really, they're not part of the Reformation. That particular church, is a remnant of the compromise. 
They're a remnant of the compromise. The British Isles were converted to true Christianity by Bartholomew. Historically, we know Bartholomew went to England to establish the church there. Till about 612, 612, that's 612 years after Jesus. It remained that way. And then the Romans found it. And they came and tried to turn everybody into a Roman, Catholic. And they'd get a king or a queen into the office of king or queen and it, that was Roman, and then they'd make everybody be a Roman, and then they'd burn all the real Christians. If you ever read Fox's Book of Martyr, it was the Catholic Church that burnt Hopper on a cold day when he only burnt up to the middle of his legs. It was 25 below zero, and he just wouldn't burn. It was one of the goriest things you ever read in your life. This went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You'd get somebody in a, as a king that was an apostolic, and they'd go right back to the truth. Then you get somebody that was Catholic, and they go back to the Catholic. Okay. We look. You guys are getting taught something now. You look here at the King James Bible. We talk about King James, right? This Bible was translated by the Compromised Church. At that time, when they split away from the Roman church the last time because of his marital problems, he created what is called the Church of England. It is a compromised church. They took some apostolic doctrine and they mixed it with Catholic doctrine, including the hierarchy and the robes and the fish hats and the and out of that, the Wesleyans came. Now, John Wesley was exposed to true apostolic people. And that's where he got his enlightenment. And he said, they are the true Christians, but I can't change it that much. He says, that is true Christianity. So the power is not there. So you go into these... I kind of like the quote thing, the one, one cult guy I read his books, he got that, the, the little things around church, you know, he got the little diggles around it. You go into those churches, and the Holy Spirit starts to work like it does in a true church. And they got two big brutes that sit back there that take the offering that escorts you out the door. <laughs> That's not the Pentecostal Apostolic Church. I don't care if they sing this is the day. I don't care if they sing the same songs that we did this morning with a fancy band. I don't care if they sing rock and roll that make your ears hurt. I don't care if they raise their hands and jump and shout. Because that are not the gifts of the Spirit. That's just a worship style that we like. We like exuberant worship because you're full of the Holy Ghost and, and makes you exuberant, so you like that. You don't have to be like that to be Pentecostal. You don't have to be like that to be apostolic. I'm not sure that Paul's saying this is the day. <laughs> he might have. It's been around a long time. But he spoke in tongues and the Spirit gave him utterance. He laid hands on the sick and they did recover. He laid hands on the blind and they did see. The power of God was in that church. <clears throat> it 
Is it in the church today? I, I haven't got nearly as far as I planned on getting. Is it here? Is it with us? Are we where we should be? Or are we short? We might be the best show in town, but are we what? Peter and Paul said they were. Or have we... started the process that happened at the Church of England so that we might be more respected in the community. our standard, and I'm, I'm not talking about this church in particular, I'm talking about the churches that claim to be the real thing. Have we lowered our standard so that we don't lose the congregation? Have we lowered our standard so that the coffers stay full? Have we lost our vision what we're supposed to be. Twenty some years ago when I came into Pentecost our visions for the lost was stronger than it is today. Our visions for missions was stronger than it is today. I realized this last week. When I sat with my wife and she was making out checks from us to missionaries. And the Lord challenged me to challenge this church. Besides your regular tithe and offering to the church, which we do take money out of the general fund and send to missions. You didn't know that. We just we have a missionary offering. How are we going to spread the gospel? How is Pentecost going to be what it was if we sat back and do not give the money to the ones that are out here in the mud, the guts, and the mess going for it? I got missionaries I support in Mexico that live in adobe huts and sleep on grass mats to get the message out. I haven't sent any money to them in years. I got a, them I did. But I mean, I, I, I know where there's a missionary that is in Africa that sleeps in a grass stuck hut on a dung floor. And if anybody wants to go, they're always willing to take a helper. I'm, my back's getting too weak to sleep on a dung floor anymore. And a grass mat, I slept on that. I did missionary work in Mexico. I slept on a grass mat. Come home with a guinea worm. So that we can spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and the apostolic message because the missionaries I support are ones that I know their doctrine is sound. I know that they believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I know that they believe in Jesus' name baptism. I know they believe in the promise of the Father to come. Amen? I can't pack up and go to those places 
And we can't, most of us can't pack up and go to those places, but we can help. You say, well, always asking for more money. Just want you more blessed. Lord God, let those out there realize they need to be in the true church of Jesus Christ that came on the day of Pentecost, that turn away from the false and come to the truth in Jesus' name. Okay, and I'd like to pray with anybody right now who wants to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It says in Romans, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And true repentance is involved. You have to be willing to repent of sin. So pray this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I accept you right now as my Lord and Savior. I ask you to come into my heart and I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. To contact us, please go to anchoredinfaith.org and click on Contact. Then fill out the form and click on the Submit button. Someone will then contact you within a short time. Social media video platforms carrying our programming can be found by clicking on TV. The latest episode can be viewed directly on our homepage at anchoredinfaith.org. Late breaking information will be posted on facebook.com slash AIFGC. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church.